Today is November 2nd, 2023. I am Natalie Mann interviewing Etel Bennett for the USC Shoah Foundation. We're in Ma'ala Hamisha, and the interview will be in English. Okay. Okay. So, first of all, Ethel, uh, Ethel, sorry. Thank you for speaking with us today. And we want to hear anything that you have to, to tell us. And if you want to stop the interview at any point, stop the okay. interview. Okay, and now we'll begin the interview. Um, could you please introduce yourself, tell us about yourself? Okay, so I'm Ethel Bennett, uh, originally Brazilian born. I came to Israel to live in the kibbutz, in Kibbutz Zikim. Um, in 1971, um, lived in Israel uh, ever since, besides two years uh, abroad being a Hebrew teacher at Carmel School in Zimbabwe. Yes, uh, and I have, um, I, have li I have lived in the kibbutz ever since. My children were born in Israel. I've got two daughters and a son, three grandchildren, and one little on the way. Um, I am a, uh, I'm a pensionary. I am, a, you know, retired. I, I, re I retired, but I still do. Uh, I, I, I'm part of my kibbutz uh, leadership. You know the community leadership. Um, uh, I take part in uh, various groups. I am a play. Um, I'm a theater a playback. I, I playback. If you know what playback theater is. Play, playback theater is when you learn uh, inter, you learn how to in two seconds by many techniques represent a story co that comes from the public you know le shakif you you take a story you use improvisation techniques and you just do it and it's very very interesting, very interesting for us, very interesting for the public. Uh, quite therapeutic at a point. It's not uh, psychodrama, no. Uh, and um, I play in a group together with Nativa Sara. Where we have a group from Zikim and from Nativa Sara and some other places. Um, I'm a musician, I sing. I sing in the choir, I play the piano. Music is a very important part of my life. Um, that's more or less who I am. <laughs> I'd like to take you back to October 7th. Black October 7th. Black October 7th. What woke you up? Um, Where were you? How did you pass the, how did you survive? I live in a very nice house on the shores of the Mediterranean. Kibbutz Zikim is a kibbutz near the sea, uh, four kilometers from the Gaza Strip. Uh, my house happens to be situated just on, on, my, on the kibbutz fence, on the kibbutz southern fence. And on that Friday, I went to bed very late. There's Netflix, and I was watching a nice movie. So I went to bed late. 
and uh, I, I woke up 6.30 in the morning with our alarm, Tseva Adom, color red, which is uh, the alarm for the Gaza Strip settlements. Um, I'm very used to it, so I just get up of bed and I go, I have a safe room in my house, I have a computer, television, a bed, it's like a, a guest uh, room, an extra room in the house. But what was different was the intensity of the rockets coming in, one after the other, with no, no stop, non-stopping. And also the very intensive shooting. The shooting went on and on, and that was weird. But at that moment, I thought it was weird, but I wasn't very worried because there is Sahal. Just next to my kibbutz, there is a, a training base for soldiers. And we know the army is around. We know we are you know, zero, four kilometers from Gaza Strip, so we should be more secured by the army. That wasn't the case. I didn't know that. That's why I wasn't worried. I stayed in the... And we were by ourselves. I'm by myself. I live by myself, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, I have one, my eldest daughter, she lives in the kibbutz, on the other side of the kibbutz, with, my, with her husband and two children. Uh, 18 and 14 and um, so I wasn't worried and news weren't coming that fast anyway. Uh, electricity part of the kibbutz was out of electricity, there's no internet at that point. We managed to speak by, by WhatsApp, sort of, uh, where are you, are you okay? Um, the timeline for that day I cannot recall. I cannot recall uh, points, little little points. But um, as I wasn't that worried, apparently I think I fell asleep for some time. Um, and I woke up about lunch time, and news were coming in. We still did not know that the kibbutz has been saved from terrorist penetrations. We did not know at that time that we had a miracle come, happening in the kibbutz. Um, hours, hours passed by. I don't really remember what happened. Uh, communication was very little. And eventually at about four o'clock, the news were coming in, in the television that a terrorist somewhere else. I thought that was uh, something very, you know, focused in the kibbutz and, and, and that's it. But no, the television was showing more places, more kibbutzim, our neighbor, Moshav, Netiva, Sarah, terrorists. So I rang um, a friend from the theater group in Netiva, Sarah, and I got the terrible news that two brothers, one of uh, them used to be my son-in-law. It's my ex-son-in-law. Um, the lady that just did not want to be represented. Uh, that's her fam that's a family. Uh, and his brother, they were killed and this was Something Igal and Amit Vax. I saw their faces in the, That's in the lobby. It. Absolutely. Beautiful, smiling faces. Lovely family, nice people. Um, my daughter was uh, married to him. To Igal or Amit? To Igal. Amit had, has his own family, three children. Uh, it was a terrible, terrible news because that uh, embodied for me what was really, really happening, a, a horrible tragedy. 
you don't just get killed in the middle of your moshav. It, it just happens. You know, what, what was going on? Terrorists in the moshav. Anyway, um, then we started realizing that the, the big tragedy, the, the, the bigger picture, you know, Kibbutz Be'eri, Kibbutz Kfar Aza, Nir Oz, they just... There were about 3,500 terrorists coming in. That's what, by the news, we know. I don't know what, what was the real number. I don't know. My Thailand was very confused. Eventually, um, I was, I, I never left the kibbutz before in any uh, uh, situation, rockets, attacks. I always stayed home because I, that's my place, my secure place. I have a secure room. I never left before. One day, two days, one week, two weeks. That never mattered to me. I would never leave. But that, that Saturday was something different. And uh, I wasn't going to leave as well. But my daughter came. And there was a certain window where people could um, go around in the kibbutz. So she came to see how I was. They wanted to take me with them, and I said, I'm staying. I'm not going anywhere. I feel safe here. And um, my son, my, my, my grandson, he says, oh, Safta, you've got to have a knife. Keep a knife in the safe room. And I said, I'm not Rambo. I'm not going to fight anyone. If they, anyone managed to come into my house, this is it. It's me. There's nothing else. <laughs> Where was I? That your grandson was saying uh, they should have a knife yeah, and, and didn't want to leave. You, what, was this afternoon, evening? What time was it? It was evening window? already. Oh, it was evening, it, it right? was evening already. Mm -hmm. And um, although I had prepared little clothes and little things in a, in a backpack, I wasn't going to leave. But then a neighbor next door, not next door, but the neighbor in the, in the neighborhood, she, she got a, this WhatsApp, I am going to Natania and I've got room in my car. And I made an instant decision to leave. I just grabbed whatever I had on my bed, I put it in a backpack and I locked the door and I left. And I went to stay with a friend in Kibbutz Yakum, which is a kibbutz uh, next to Netanya. Um, and I stayed there for almost three weeks. Um, first, the first week, it's like you're visiting sort of thing. Although the, the, the pain and the, the, the grief for the fallen ones and, and the ones I knew very closely, uh, my heart was very heavy and um, the grief was great. I traveled to see the burials. Impossible, uh, something terrible. And all the, the burials couldn't even be in the same place where the people were born, although they have to be temporary burials anywhere. And um, after the second week, and, and it slowly, you know, it sinks the fact that you're a refugee in your own country. And this is an um, unbearable thought, really. It's not viable in any way, I mean. Yeah, we still have to listen to that. Mouazin. Yeah. Didn't, didn't used to, I mean, I used to think it was exotic. It still is. I mean, uh, I mean, the, fa the, uh, the Muslims are not Hamas. I, I don't think the, the, you know, 
I don't want to talk politics at all. I don't want, I, I, I refuse. It, everything is too painful. Uh, if other people want to talk to politics, I, I will not. Um, anyway, uh, also I felt very disappointed when you, all your trust um, just broke, just failed you. you. You're there on the border to keep your ideology or my Zionist uh, addiction and I, I like felt betrayed because Tzal wasn't there. I mean, you know, it's, then there is this aftershock. What would that, if I knew, how would I have felt? You know, this, oh, the whole thing, you know, there was, the kibbutz was saved mainly by the civil guard, by our members that stayed there while we left. Um, we were lucky that they had the guns that they needed. There was a point that the army wanted to, Pikuda Orev wanted to take away the, the guns or at least lock them in a, in, a, in a proper place. And our chief of civil guard refused. And that was one of the things, that people had the guns. There was one member, he was sitting while guarding and he saw the Savannah car coming in and he thought it's an army car. And black uniform came out and he's still waving. He thought it was Tal until he saw the RPG coming out and, you know, shh. So he started shooting and then the, the rest of the guard came in and there were some people, some officers, uh, that live in the kibbutz, that there were there were more guns and, and they killed them all. But I think if there was one extra car, we would not have survived. If there was one extra group of terrorists, what happened is that they attacked the army base. They did a massacre over there. They were busy slaughtering. And your soldiers is, is right next to it. Yes, it's, it's got the same name as the army base. No? It can, it can, yeah. yeah. So um, it was uh, a bad. It, it's a horrible feeling. And then uh, time came, you know, to join my community wherever we are. My family, my daughter is in kibbutz Dotiam. Half of the kibbutz is in. Kibbutz Dot Yam, which is near Caesarea, mm -hmm. and half of the kibbutz is set here. But uh, the people around as well, you know, and friends and family, um, but mainly the two centers are here and Sdot Yam, where we're trying to keep a community, a community, all the, all the, the things that build a community, education, the children started having, you know, kindergarten, the children would start going to school here. And uh, when you go to a hotel, usually you think, nice, hofish, you know, you, you have a holiday, you know, little soaps and the perfumes and the bed made for you. And you, you come, in a mode that you have to change and the mode has to change into now this is home we were very lucky zikim was very lucky there was nobody killed they didn't get into the kibbutz the houses stand um, of course economical damage yeah. We have on the kibbutz today, we have the civil guard, a lot of soldiers, plenty of army, and the dairy people, because we have one of the great biggest dairies in the country, and the milk has to come, have to milk the cows. And they keep changing, you know, they come for the weekends to see the family, and you know, they keep exchanging. But this, these are the people that are in Zikim right now. 
We can get there, we have to have special uh, permission to get there together with soldiers that will accompany me to my house if I need to take something. I, know, I don't know what's in my fridge. I'll have to get there to just sort it out. And this is, this is life now. So what I'm trying to do now here, um, we have people of the third age. And uh, while, when I was working, my job in the kibbutz was, uh, I was centralizing, uh, how do you call it, um, health and uh, social, social, not social work, but sort of all the... Uh, needs. Their all, needs. All, all the needs mm -hmm. for, for, for the chaverim and um, using my knowledge and my experience I joined the team here that are trying to deal with all the needs for the elderly, the third age, which is uh, something to do. This is very important to do something. We have no date to go back. We don't know how long we're staying here. Uh, we were told about three months. I have a very nice room. But uh, it's all temporary. And this is more or less my story. Yeah, you don't have any privacy. That's um, your own, you, you have your own room, right? Because you, you know. Sad the, the other thing I have to get used to is you usually you come to a hotel. Um, I have to set a mode that I have to go out. <laughs> it's it's really a a change of mind, mamash. You know, I have to go. I want to go to Tel Aviv. I want to go to see my daughter in Tel Aviv. I want to go out. I'm not in a. This is home now. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's all the opposite, you know. Yeah. Um. So, this is my story. Um. I call it. Regarding a meat box, I mean, do you have like any more details about how they were killed, or? Amit was in the civil guard mm. at the moshav. In Nativa Asara. In Nativa Asara. Next door. Next door moshav. Mm -hmm. Nativa Asara had 21 people killed. Whole family. Father and son, brother and brother. Amazing, amazing, horrible, amazing horror story. People, I, I, I don't want to get into it. Uh, yeah. it's, it's not my story mm -hmm. and I understand fully why that lady would not want to. It's too fresh, it's too painful. Um, yeah. People I know, you know, they're not there anymore, and, and just like this. Um, Eagle was killed while trying to get guns. He was running to get a gun. He had no guns. Amit had guns, but they caught him in the middle of the way and they shot him down dead. Do you have uh, a message you would like to people to hear at any point that they hear this interview? Um, we need support. Um, we need support to, to rebuild what has been destroyed, but we need support from the Jewish communities. Um, I would say, you know, we, we would like to be adopted by like like I have a twin twin city a twin community you know to support us uh, not only economically because the, the, the businesses have been damaged as well but um, moral and spiritual support because this is t absolutely holocaust too
Because to be slaughtered in your own country, like this, the horror stories, um, tragedy. There is now before October 7 and after October 7. Nothing will be the same. And thank you for listening. Thank you for, for listening to us. Absolutely. Thank you for telling us the story. Hi. <sighs>